Namaste everyone and welcome to our channel where we explore Bharat's past, present and beyond. In today's video, we are going to learn about the science behind Indian temples. What do you see when you look at a temple? Just a stone. Is that all there is to it? Well, let's forget about religion for a moment and talk science. Let's look at this stone as a stone. What can it do? How can it affect us? And why do people worship it? Before answering all these questions, first let's understand what does a temple consist of. Temples are not just places of worship or prayer, but they are also designed to connect human beings with the divine energy. They are built according to ancient principles of architecture, geometry and astronomy that reflect the cosmic order and harmony. The first thing we need to understand is that temples are not randomly located or oriented. They are carefully chosen based on the magnetic and electric fields of the earth. The ideal location for a temple is one with high positive energy and low negative energy. The main entrance of a temple is called the Gopuram. It's usually a tall tower that acts as a gateway to the sacred space. The Gopuram is designed to capture and amplify the electromagnetic waves that emanate from the earth. As we enter through the Gopuram, we feel a sense of dynamism and vitality. The next part of a temple is the Mandapa. An open hall where people gather for rituals and ceremonies. The mandapa has pillars that support the roof and serve as a symbol of various gods and goddesses. These are intricately carved pillars represent different aspects of nature such as animal, plants and flowers. The mandapa leads us to the most important part of a temple, the Garbhagriha or Sanctum Sanctorum. This is where the main idol or image of the deity is installed. The Garbhagriha is usually a small chamber with a single door and no windows. Now the question raises, why is it so small and dark? Because it creates an environment that concentrates the vibration and energy in one place. The idol or image of the deity acts as a focal point for these vibrations and radiates them in all directions. The Garbhagriha also corresponds to one of our chakras or energy centers in our body, the Agnya Chakra, located between our eyebrows. This chakra is associated with intuition, wisdom and enlightenment. When we stand in front of the idol or deity in the Garbhagriha, we align our Agniya chakra with it and receive its blessings. We also feel a sense of calmness and peace that washes over us. To enhance this experience further, we also remove our shoes before entering a temple. This allows us to absorb more positive energy from the ground through our feet. Another important element in a temple is the Dhwajastambam or flagpole. This pole stands outside the Garbhagriha and represents the spine of our body. It also connects the earth and sky, symbolizing the axis mundi or cosmic pillar. During special occasions like Kumbh Abhishekam, which happens once every 12 years, the flagpole is energized by pouring water over it. This transfer some of its powers to the deity inside the Garbhagriha, rejuvenating it and restoring its potency. Now let's take a moment to forget about religion and talk about the science behind these temple structures. Imagine you are in a valley and you shout something. The sound travels, hits the rocks and comes back to you. This is called echo and it's scientifically proven. Every rock can do this depending on how loud and how long the sound is. Inside the temple there is a lingam or a statue made of rock. It is placed in a closed wall structured with a pyramid shaped roof pointing to the sky. There is no ventilation, no light, no air, just the stone and the sound. People chant mantras to the stone every day from morning to night. They send sound waves to the stone continuously. What does this stone do? It echoes back the sound. But not just that. It also creates forms and patterns with the sound. Sound has a form and an impact on everything in the cosmos. Our body is made of five elements, water, earth, air, fire and space. 72% of our body is water, 12% is earth, 6% is air, 4% is fire and the rest is space. Don't you think this sound has an impact on our system? The yogis of the past knew this secret. They mastered the sound and played with the elements. This is not fiction or magic. This is science and reality. You and I can do this too, if we attain a certain mastery over the sound. But we need to do a different level of practice or sadhana. So next time when you see a temple or a stone, don't ridicule it or dismiss it. It is more than what meets the eye. It is a source of energy, a form of sound and a gateway to the divine. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new about the fascinating history and culture of Bharat. 
प्लीज लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब टू आवर चैनल फॉर एक्सप्लोरिंग मोर वीडियोज ऑन भारत पास्ट प्रेजेंट एंड बियॉन्ड ऑल्सो लीव योर कमेंट्स बिलो एंड लेट इज नो वॉट यू थिंक अबाउट दिस टॉपिक थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग